I'd like to introduce uh, a couple of my good friends here, Adam and Adam. Adam Derek, Adam Mahmood, uh, Jamf system engineer, and Jamf, what do you do now officially? You keep changing your title. Most people just call me the healthcare guy. The healthcare guy, there we go. And we're <laughs> here for Setup and Reset. I pass this mic to you, and enjoy. Thank you so much, sir. Well, yeah, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, the show, the star of the show is this Adam, not me. Uh, I'm just simply here to welcome you and really more than anything, ask not only for your participation today, but if you're so kind, to actually have you come to a follow-up tomorrow. Uh, we have an interactive lab at 11.30 tomorrow in the Regency Room, uh, all about shared device management, specifically iOS devices. And so we'll be showing really everything that you see today with our iOS apps, Jamf Setup and Jamf Reset, as well as some other tools alongside Jamf Pro, and how those things in combination can be powering new types of workflows in any industry. So we'd love to have you there. One last point, if you try to add that session to your app, the JNUC app, it'll say that it's full. Don't worry about that. Everything is first come, first serve. We want you to come to the labs. Thanks so much. I'll turn it over to Adam. Cool. Thank you very much, Adam. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. My name is Adam Derrick. I'm a sales engineer on our systems engineering team here at Jamf. Um, I've been working with uh, iOS and Mac devices for the past 12 years uh, out in the enterprise, primarily focusing in healthcare and higher education. So today we're gonna take a deep dive into Jamf setup and Jamf reset. Um, who here was at the keynote last year when we went ahead and announced Jamf setup and reset? Awesome. By a show of hands, how many people in this room currently are using Jamf setup or Jamf reset? Wow. We're gonna talk at the end. <laughs> so for those of you who are not familiar with Jamf setup or Jamf reset, they're both iOS applications that allow you to have a shared device environment. Oop. There we go, sorry. That allow you to have a shared device environment in your unique org. The nice thing with this is it's not meant to be a replacement for the Apple shared iPad. Um, this is meant for unique scenarios uh, that you might have in your org. Primarily, a lot of the uh, advertising and a lot of the talk around Jamf setup and reset has been around healthcare. However, there's a lot of other wonderful use cases that I've heard from our customers and that I've used myself that I'd like to share with everybody here today. Um, this particular session is going to focus on how do we set up Jamf setup and reset on the back end with Jamf Pro. Um, and how we're able to go ahead and troubleshoot any issues that we might run into. So if you take a look um, sorry, on the iPads there on the screen, on the left we have Jamf Setup. Essentially, the user would go ahead and select an iPad off of a cart, and they would select their role. Once they select their role, it's gonna go ahead and configure the iPad according to that specific role. When the user is finished with the iPad, they could either open up Jamf Setup and select another role if they're moving into another role for today, or they could uh, select Jamf Reset, which will uh, essentially send an API command out to Jamf Pro, and within seconds the device will be wiped and digitally sanitized, ready for the next user. So as Adam mentioned a few moments ago, we do have that interactive lab tomorrow. Um, you could ignore the bottom part where it's saying to register uh, in the app since uh, that's not available, but hope to see everybody there at 11.30 tomorrow morning. So as I mentioned, uh, this presentation will review effectively executing Jamf setup and reset um, to ensure that your data is stored and removed from the shared devices securely. We're gonna discuss the initial implementation, configuration, and the time investment necessary. And we're gonna examine some best practices for getting those applications out on the devices. One side note is a lot of what we're talking about today can be automated. There is out on GitHub um, a product called Jamf Setup Constructor, uh, which is essentially script-based as far as getting this configured. 
I wanted to focus this presentation on the meat of the product because if in the future we need to go ahead and add a, a new user role or change anything, it's really good to know what makes the product work in the background. So, Awesome, so the Jamf setup app, um, it's gonna leverage smart groups and it's gonna go ahead and provision the device exactly for the needs of the current user. So then IT can go ahead and distribute the devices and let the user choose the configuration that best reflects their role or their needs. So example, you have a nurse who picks it up and they might have a doctor or a transport role on there as well. Um, if you're in a construct uh, construction industry, you might have a mechanic or a foreman that's gonna be uh, using it and there might be specific apps that are applicable to each individual role. So a number of use cases other than health, uh, healthcare, obviously uh, this works wonderful in healthcare, but some things that are often overlooked are the hospitality industry. Um, so think of using this for like a front desk check-in um, or like a guest to use it temporarily uh, if they need to look something up. Maybe a maintenance technician will use it to go ahead and access uh, the building management system or a valet might use it to go ahead and check in drivers. In the transportation industry, we might, uh, specific to aviation, they might use it as a digital flight bag for pilots. So the pilot is assigned the iPad, he selects his specific role, and he'll be presented with the applications that he could use for that uh, specific role. In manufacturing, we might have something like an operator, maintenance technician, supervisor, or just a time clock role. One that uh, I personally set up was a library and help desk loaner. Um, I've used this firsthand in a number of different environments. The problem that I experienced was students would borrow an iPad for short-term use, and they would bring it back to the help desk, and we might have somebody at the help desk who wasn't versed in resetting an iPad and getting it back to where it should be. So the way I had that set up was I had only the Jamf reset app, and that would be docked, so that way when the user was finished, they would just hit the reset button, and they would be confident that their data is just gonna be digitally sanitized off, off that device completely. So there's a couple things that we need to check off before we can begin configuring Jamf setup. Um, first, our Jamf Pro needs to be 10.0 or later, which I'm pretty sure everybody in this room is on 10.0 or later, hopefully. <laughs> Um, we need to have Apple Business Manager or Apple School Manager to procure the apps. Now, this is not a requirement. However, if you're looking to automate um, this entire process, it's necessary to have Apple Business Manager or Apple School Manager to go ahead and utilize volume purchasing to go ahead and push out those applications automatically. Finally, we'll need a dedicated Jamf Pro user account which we're gonna to use to make API calls back um, to Jamf Pro from the Jamf setup app. And we'll touch on this in a few moments. So when you look at Jamf setup, it may seem more involved than it really is. It's nice because you could brand it with your organization's logo and you could really configure it for your specific needs. But if you're not into programming, it might seem like a lot to you. Um, once the app is configured the way you want it to be, and you do some testing in your environment, you'll be able to roll this out pretty quickly. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and set up that dedicated user account, which is gonna be uh, making those API calls back to the Jamf Pro server. Now, some people might have an account that's used for API calls, that's multiple purposes. Um, for our uh, instance here, the best practice is to make a dedicated account exclusively for Jamf setup, nothing else. The only permission that that's gonna have is um, it's gonna be able to uh, update, the mobile uh, sorry, update the mobile device extension attributes, update mobile devices, and update users. No other permissions are gonna be assigned to that account. So once we have that API account set up, we're gonna wanna procure the Jamf setup application through Apple Business Manager 
or Apple School Manager. Once we have that, uh, sorry, once we have that application uh, procured, in our Jamf Pro, we're going to go to mobile device apps, and we're going to add Jamf Setup. In here, we want to make sure that uh, the distribution method is to install automatically. And uh, as far as like scope and self-service and things like that, um, we're going to scope it out to our smart groups that we're going to be creating shortly. Um, however, we don't want to make that available like in self-service to our other users because it's probably not going to fit their needs. So this is the magic behind the scenes as far as making uh, Jamf setup work. And I apologize, those red squares are supposed to be shifted over. I don't know what happened to the keynote. <laughs> but we're going to be utilizing the managed app configuration in Jamf Pro. And this is going to allow us to customize the Jamf setup application. So as you can see, it looks like a lot. But if we break things down, we, things really start to make sense. Um, up on the screen, the things that are really key are going to be the Jamf Pro username to make the API calls, the password for that account, and the uh, extension attribute strings. If any of this information is incorrect, the application will not work, and we're going to uh, get thrown error messages. Now, I see some people taking pictures. Um, at the end of the session, I am going to uh, pull up uh, some resources on JF Nation for you guys, um, and you'll be able to find uh, all these screenshots and how to um, get it configured for your environment. So next thing we need to do is we need to create an extension attribute in Jamf Pro. So we're going to open up Jamf Pro, head over to Settings, Device Management, and we're going to create a new extension attribute. You could name this extension attribute whatever you would like, um, but one extension attribute is required to set up Jamf uh, setup. Once we have that extension attribute set up, we're going to create a smart group in Jamf Pro. That smart group, uh, the criteria for it is going to be that extension attribute that we set up, and then the uh, value is going to be the specific roles that you guys would like to have set up. So in the example up on the screen, we have valet. So it is not required. However, it's highly recommended um, in order to retain the settings um, that we're choosing uh, to deploy Jamf setup to push out everything. Um, we highly recommend pushing out an extra configuration profile that's not going to allow uh, the users to erase all content and settings. We're not going to allow them to put a passcode on the device. We're not going to allow them to modify it. We're not going to allow them to put any additional restrictions. And we're not going to allow them to modify the wallpaper. Again, this is not required. But to make it work in your environment and to prevent additional issues, highly recommend it. So you might be thinking, now that I got the app set up, how am I going to get additional applications pushed out? maybe a custom wallpaper, and maybe a, a layout. You're going to set everything else up normally like you would in your Jamf Pro. However, you're going to scope it to the smart groups that we created in the previous step just for uh, those roles in, in Jamf setup. So the part one is finished. We got Jamf setup ready to go. But what about Jamf reset if we're going to be using that in our environment? So a lot of people ask, do I need to use Jamf Setup and Jamf Reset together? And the answer to that is no. It depends on what you're looking to accomplish. Some users just choose Jamf Reset, and they just want to have, it, uh, to have the ability to just digitally sanitize that device quickly. And they don't care what applications are on the iPad because it's going to get wiped. Some environments just leverage Jamf Setup uh, by itself. And they don't essentially want the iPads or the iPhones getting wiped, but they want to have the ability to choose uh, the user roles that are out there. A lot of times, I see people leveraging both, because a doctor might open up Jamf setup and sign into an EMR, put in some notes, 
and he's concerned about the data that's still on that device. So to give him that uh, benefit, let's just go ahead and push out Jamf reset on there and allow him to reset the device when he's finished. So the setup for Jamf reset is very similar uh, to Jamf setup. Um, we do need to go ahead and create that account to make the API calls, but we're gonna assign some different permissions this time. We're gonna give it permissions to create mobile devices. We're gonna give it permissions to send mobile device remote wipe commands. And we're gonna give it a permission to enable a send mobile device rest uh, send mobile device restart device command. One thing that we need to make sure we touch on is re-enrollment. So if you take a look up on the screen, if we go to settings, global management, and re-enrollment, we wanna check the box to clear the extension attribute values on computers and mobile devices. This is gonna make things a lot easier when we go back through that automated device enrollment and we get back into Jamf setup, it's gonna clear some of those values that were there from the previous uh, use of that device. So as far as the proc uh, procurement of Jamf reset, it's essentially gonna be the exact same way as we procured Jamf setup. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get the application from Apple Business Manager or Apple School Manager. We're gonna go into our Jamf Pro and we're gonna make that uh, mobile device app available. We're gonna set it to install automatically. And then we're gonna go ahead and set up that managed app config again. So just going back two steps, we're gonna make sure that that user account that we created to have the API calls for the reset, we're gonna have those credentials stored. And then we also need the JSS ID for your uh, Jamf Pro server. So a lot of people in this room are probably wondering, what does this look like? So for Jamf uh, Reset, when you open up the application, this is the screen that you're gonna be presented with. When the user wants to reset the device, they'll go ahead and hit reset, and they'll confirm that they want the device wiped. Afterwards, it's gonna wipe the device, they're gonna be presented to go ahead and select their language, their region, and connect to a network. Once they're connected to a network, automated device enrollment from Apple is gonna kick in, your device is gonna be re-enrolled to Jamf Pro, and setup and reset are gonna get pushed back down uh, based off of what we have set up here. So if we take a look at the video up here on the screen, this is for manufacturing. So we open up setup, we go ahead and select our role. We assign the role to the device. Within a matter of seconds, any applications and configurations are gonna be pushed down right onto that device. Now a lot of people ask, how does that get there so quickly? The applications actually live on a device, um, but with the use of the smart groups, depending on the role you have, it's gonna go ahead and hide those devices. We're going in selecting our another role, and within a matter of moments, we have a different background and different applications available to us. So just to recap what we talked about, um, it's relatively simple to configure as far as the instructions to configure it for your unique environment, everything's available out on Jamf Nation. Jamf setup can be completely tailored for your unique environment. You could have as many roles in the application as you want. Um, I had somebody test 70 different roles a couple weeks ago, so I don't know who would want 70 different roles on an iOS device, but <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> so if you, uh, Go to Jamf Nation and you type in Article 535. That's gonna provide you step-by-step -step instructions on how to set up Jamf Setup and Jamf re Reset in your environment for you. If you want to uh, not set up in your environment, but maybe do a little bit more testing with it, 
we do have Jamf.io. This is a super awesome interactive environment to test out multiple variations of Jamf setup and reset for different environments such as healthcare, education, and hospitality and retail. The Jamf setup constructor, it's script-based. And essentially, everything that we went through today, as far as uh, creating those smart groups and getting the mobile app config ready, can all be set up with Jamf setup constructor through a script. And then we have Jamf Nation Article 535, which is going to give us those step-by-step -step instructions to get the application set up. So at this point, I would like to invite anybody up to the microphones who's currently using Jamf Setup or Jamf Reset in their environment. And if you have a unique uh, use case for it that you would like to share with the group that you're comfortable with sharing, um, we would love, love to hear your use case and your experience with Jamf Setup and Reset. And if you do have any accessibility needs, please just raise your hand. I'll be more than happy to come over with the microphone. Are you going to have a question and answer? Yes. Yes, afterwards. Mm -hmm. Anybody like to share here? Here we go. Hi, my name is Michael Woodard from San Jose Unified School District. Um, one of the things we've used you know, set up for is we have our techs that go and mo manage multiple carts for classrooms. We actually give them a device that they can choose um, what cart they're working with, and it'll mirror what iPads the students are using, so that way we don't actually have to take a device out of a student's hand. They can just say, OK, here's what my device is configured as, and it mirrors the student without interrupting the students. So an easy troubleshooting technique for them. Awesome. And how has the end user experience been with that? Aside from push notifications getting stuck, preventing apps from installing or getting that command out there, it works wonderfully. Okay. It's nice to be able to just hit the button and the device is ready to go. Great. Yeah. Thank you very much for sharing. Would anybody else like to share? I will share another use case that I uh, set up personally last year. Uh, so I also provide IT consulting uh, back in my home state of Pennsylvania. And I had a ski resort approach me about utilizing iPads when uh, the lines for guest services would just get super, super long. Um, however, they wanted uh, the users to be able to fill out a liability form. However, they had multiple liability forms based on what the user was going to be doing. So if they were a young child and they were going snow tubing, they would have a parental consent form. Um, if it was somebody who was purchasing a season pass, they would have a longer form that they would have to fill out for the liability release for that. Um, so what I wound up doing was uh, demoing Jamf setup to them. Essentially, they would choose their role in Jamf setup. Uh, so if it was like a snow tubing release, um, or if it was a ski season pass release, they would choose that particular uh, release there. Then I had a web clip pushed down with the liability form. Um, they would go ahead and fill it out. When it was done, iPad would be reset. So. Awesome. I'm going to open up the microphones to any questions. Um, if anybody has any questions, feel free to come up to the microphones. As Adam did discuss in the beginning of the session, um, if you would like to give Jamf Setup and Jamf Reset a try, definitely stop by tomorrow morning at 1130 for the Shared Devices Interactive Lab. That's where you're really going to get to test out Jamf Setup and Reset. We're going to have different uh, environments set up based on uh, different uh, roles that are out there. So. Any questions? Does there need to be a separate account for setup and a separate user account for reset? So I would highly recommend having a, a, a yeah, we'll have you repeat it so everybody can hear. <laughs>
Does there have to be a separate user account for setup and reset? Yes, and that's a, a very good question. So I would highly recommend creating a separate account um, just because of the API permissions that you're assigning there. You can create one account and assign all those permissions. However, if you're being very granular with what permissions you're giving the users, my best practice would be to set up a separate account just for Jamf setup and a separate account just for Jamf reset to make those API calls. Yes, again. <laughs> my understanding was that because you're um, just switching the profile that you're displaying the applications with, that the data for all those applications are still retained on the device itself. So you have to be very careful about if you've entered uh, account information that it doesn't Yes, that it's actually yes. when you open up Jamf Setup and choose another role, um, those applications are still on a device. So any data that's there will live on a device until um, Reset would be used, um, which is why I wouldn't recommend using Reset with Jamf Setup, but I know of some customers who do not uh, want the iPads reset. So great question. Thank you. So are you saying that um, all the applications live on the iPad? We have yes. like 1,300. So <laughs> there's no way would, they would ever fit all on the one iPad. Yeah, yeah. So obviously, um, you know, there would be you know storage requirements that you have to you know um, take in, into account there. But um, essentially, when the device would go through automated enrollment in the beginning, any applications uh, that are scoped out uh, to the smart groups uh, that that device has. The applications will live on a device, and then dependent upon the role, it'll go ahead and hide that application. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Um, my company's looking at potentially using this solution for uh, iPhones that would be given to employees when they travel internationally, like okay. a, a loaner phone. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned the uh, recommendations of locking down passcode and, and account settings. You know, we would want those open so people can sign in with iCloud and whatnot. Um, I imagine we can use the pre-stage enrollment to ensure the activation lock is not permitted during that time. Are there any other gotchas that we should know for that particular use case? Yeah, so for that particular use case that you're mentioning there, um, obviously you're going to want to tailor that to your unique environment. Um, as far as like if it was just like a shared device that was maybe like in a cart or something like that, um, generally those aren't going to have you know passcodes applied to them. But yeah, obviously in, in your particular case, um, you're going to want to have a passcode on there. But as far as like gotchas for pre-stage enrollment or anything like that, um, no, nah, there's there's nothing out there that that I've experienced. So okay, thanks. You're welcome. Are you aware of any uh, companies that are using a workflow to forcibly log out or reset after a certain amount of time? Like, for example, um, commenting on how the apps, if you just change profiles, still have the data stored in there somehow. Mm -hmm. We would want kind of like a fail safe if after an hour or a day, make sure that that gets reset and cleared automatically. Do you know of anything, uh, API customization? Adam, or? do you know anybody? I don't know anybody specifically that's doing that, but I do know somebody that has an application that can do timed policies. God now. is speaking. I was like, Who's talking? God. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. What he said. No, and I, I would just double click on that. That like part of this is we would love your ideas of what you'd like to see in the future with these applications. Our product management team has been actually since we launched last year uh, reviewing a list of additional features we, okay. we had when we first came up with the apps. So there's a couple other Jamf Nation articles uh, about those feature requests we'd love your comments on. Okay, cool. Yeah. I'll take a look. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Adam. <laughs> I, know you can, I know you can restrict it by roles, but can you, how do you define what users can use those roles? So the way it looks is just is a drop down of all the roles that are listed. Correct, yeah. So most of these use cases are really just for a specific role, not a specific user, if that makes sense. Because um, generally, like uh, the shared iPad for education, that's going to be more like a user-based role. 
Um, whereas this is more just kind of like an industry specific, uh, you know, I have a specific job title that I'm going to be configuring it for. So we're, we're using a website, a PHP website right now okay. to do that. And we're in education. Uh, we have 30,000 30, iPads that I'm managing. And we have students that log in. We're just using their name to basically base that what grade they are by their fully qualified name when it goes to the LDAP. Okay. So we can do it by a student as a role, but a student would never say, I'm a student. They'll definitely pick staff or something like that. Yes, yes. No, I, I, I understand where you're coming from. Um, I just don't think that this is like the environment for something like that, if that makes sense. Cool. If I can just add a quick comment to the last point there. I think when we first launched Jamf Setup and Reset, it was really all about these kind of temporary customized needs. Um, and maybe not for an employee of an organization in some cases. Maybe you're a guest of a hotel or, or a different environment. So that ability to just pick something from a drop-down menu without the need for any authentication, but still yield a customized experience, that was really the goal. Now, that said, you also saw in the keynotes, Joel uh, previewing Jamf Connect for mobile. And I think that's kind of the future of what you're asking for is, when you mix in identity plus a provisioning workflow like this for a particular user's needs. So I think these both serve kind of different use cases that we're going after today. That is true, yes, yep. I hear you there. I was gonna uh, also mention too, um, in, in our role with sales engineering, we do come across unique environments like that. And I do know of some like next gen uh, things that I really can't talk about here publicly with, with Jam Setup, kind of like a V2, um, where I've seen something like that in action. So um, pay attention. It, it, it definitely might be something you know, down the road that makes, makes itself available. Yes? Um, we're looking at a scenario, I was just kind of curious if you've ever heard of it, where it's like a banking situation. Um, so customer comes in. And we have a banking app where they can apply for a loan and so forth. And when they do that, they're going to need to get confirmed that the person is a client and so forth. So email needs to be sent. They need to confirm it. So there's a couple things they need to do. Then the next client comes in. Then we want to reset, have it all taken off and then set up. So it's just a, a customized setup for the uh, new client. Have mm -hmm. you heard of that? And is that possible? So yeah, I mean, that's absolutely possible. So um, are you going to be using like one specific uh, email account that you're going to be pushing down through a configuration profile in Jamf Pro? It's not any, it, I mean, a client comes in, they'll have their own email account. So they'll have to go online. They'll go and, on to their own email provider. OK, gotcha. Uh -huh. Yeah, then, yeah then, I mean, that's, that, that's definitely something uh, that's a really good use case. I haven't seen anything like that. but. Absolutely, Jamf setup and reset can accomplish that. What 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 is the turnaround on time from getting reset to then get the um, app apps that we want on there back up and running for setup? Like so, it's essentially um, think of like if you go on your iPhone and you go to you know settings general re reset and you do the reset, it's not going to reach out and get the latest greatest version of iPad OS or iOS. Um, so it's a matter of you know a couple moments until you're back at the setup assistant. So, okay. And then the next person, will they? Well, we need to have an assistant there to then get through the first couple things. Or so I would highly recommend having your pre-stage enrollment not prompt for anything other than location services. Um, we've had a number of customers that implemented programs like this, and it, you know, connecting to a network and other things. Yeah, that can seem like a lot, but in this day and age, connecting to like an open network that you guys might have just to get uh, the iPads or the iOS devices online, and then once they're enrolled through automated enrollment, it'll push down through Jamf Pro a config profile with your corporate network. Um, as long as you have like a like an open network that they can connect to, it's generally pretty easy. The one thing that I definitely would recommend would be go ahead and hide a lot of the uh, 
extra steps uh, in the pre-stage enrollment and just have the location services and that's it. Um, you know, don't give them the choice for light mode or dark mode. <laughs> so yeah, they goes, they'll just hit the location services and then the next thing comes up and say, hey, um, I'm... Remote management. I'm the... Yeah. yeah, I mean, well, I mean, we're talking about a customer then, so we want to, you want a customer to go through remote management and so forth? Yeah, so um, in... Pretty much all these cases out here, whoever is having the iPad, they're going to go through the remote management. I mean, okay. essentially at that point, they have no choice but to continue. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's kind of all about just kind of educating people on the experience. But um, you know, I have okay. all faith that if you guys implement a program like that, um, even just having some instructions there, you know, it's really essentially three steps for them to get it set up. Okay. So, all right. Um, now there are ways. Um, to completely automate the process. Um, and that's where the interactive lab tomorrow is great because you have the Apple provisioning utility, uh, essentially where if you would have a cart with like a Mac mini um, and you know somebody's done, they could plug the iPad in. It's just gonna automatically go ahead and uh, reset the iPad and it's gonna automatically go through that entire remote management process for you. Um, um, I would definitely check out the interactive lab tomorrow if you want to see what that experience is like. Yeah, thanks. Great, great question. Thank you, Adam. We have one over here on the far uh, right of you. Up, right. oh, far right. You okay. can go first. Just a pretty basic question, really. Uh, is there a, any sort of a hard limit on the number of dedicated GEMP setup licenses a, or, or accounts that a uh, institution or company can have? Not that I know of, Adam. You, have you? I the only to. limitation is how many apps you can actually buy through a uh, school manager or business manager at once. And SAP told me last year it was like 10,000 when they tried. So Cool. Yeah. At a time. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you got a really big role out there. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, one, one example that I come across a lot is somebody needs an iPad really quickly. Yes. And they need documents on it to present. Mm -hmm. um, any use cases like that for this? I mean, I could see it, but I'm just wondering about a simple way to get people to put the documents on there. Just curious to know what people are doing. Uh, assuming there are some of people are using Windows computers. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, I would say so any kind of cloud storage. Um, I've had uh, environments where they want like PDF documents to be pushed down and made available, mm -hmm. and that exactly. you could do through Jamf Pro by pushing down an ebook um, to the device if you need a document on there. But as far as like gaining access to any kind of documents or anything quickly, yeah, G Suite or any other uh, iCloud, any other kind of provider gotcha. out there would would be the way to go. Gotcha. So you probably need to enforce a password or something. Yeah. All right, great, thank you. You're welcome. I was gonna say something, but to his point real quick, maybe looking at instituting, pushing something into files. But to, I didn't come up when you were asking for use cases, but because we haven't implemented this yet, but the use case is I work for a very large an events company, and we would, I'm looking to push this out where JNUC, American Heart, Be Whatever Association needs certain apps for their event, and then they would just pick the event, and then it, sets it for that event, and then they can do a reset and pick the next event and keep moving the iPads through different great. events. So that's kind of where it's at. Thank you for sharing. Wow, a lot of really great questions. Um, anybody have anything else? We may have time left for one more question for you. Um, so say so we had a use case where, um, I guess there's two, two things here where um, we might have, say, like library, some library who wants to use Jamf Setup in that way for a loaner program, maybe another department that wants to also be using Jamf Setup, and we're in the same instance. Mm -hmm. And we wouldn't want necessarily each of those departments to have the same list of choices through app config. Mm -hmm. How would we break that out into two? Then I guess separately, depending on what somebody's picked from app config or from that list, is there a way for us to have different app configs maybe for the same application that each group is getting? So in your Jamf Pro, you want to go to uh, your mobile applications, mm -hmm. and you just want to add Jamf setup a second time a second in there, time. Okay. and then add a second app config in there. Okay. So. So, great. Awesome. Yeah, very good question. Awesome. Anything else before we wrap things up? 
This has been great. I really appreciate everybody coming out here today for this session. Um, again, definitely stop by the Interactive Lab tomorrow at 11.30 to experience firsthand everything that we talked about. Additionally, um, if you want to open up the JNUC app and provide uh, any kind of feedback about this session in the survey, we'd greatly appreciate that. Um, if you do have any other questions, I'll be around for a couple minutes here at the end. So other than that, enjoy uh, the rest of JNUC.